Hey there, hey there, hey there. Kisses and hugs. Mwah. This is teacher Alona. I'd like to welcome you on my video class, which is devoted to prepositions. We are here to get to know what they are, how to memorize them, and a few insights how I'm doing that. Let's go. So today's video class will be also on my screen. You can see now here what we are talking today about. So I'm going to tell you what the prepositions are, what kind of types exist and how to memorize it. It's going to be a short video class. So yeah, stay tuned. So let's talk about what the prepositions are. So let's start with the first one. What are prepositions and what we actually can use them for? Um, Short disclaimer, there will be not a lot of theory, I promise. Here are a few examples for you to see uh, what are prepositions and how they are used in sentences. Can you identify prepositions? Let's see. I ran into the classroom, into, of course, the lady beside Peter, beside as a preposition, she spoke to him, which is preposition, he's passionate about swimming, and I went to Singapore. All these things are called prepositions and let's see what they are used for. The function of a preposition is to demonstrate the relationship between two words in a sentence, normally between a noun, verb or adjective and a noun, including proper noun, pronoun and gerund. All the grammar and theory aside, the conclusion, we just connect the words by using prepositions. It's a very necessary, it's very necessary, important, and it's impossible to be without them in English. But as you may know, there are also more compound and complex prepositions, which are two word ones, for example, according to three word ones in search of and four word ones, which are also called prepositional phrases, like at the expense off. This is a little bit of theory, but let's get into practice. So how to memorize prepositions. The first method, which I suggest not do, is not follow all those lists. Lists like this, as you can see, I'm showing it to you. Uh, never ever has this kind of type of activity helped me to memorize anything, phrasal verbs, prepositions, prepositions, and etc., any sort of vocabulary. That's why it's better not to do it. In many cases, in such lists, there are various types. They have nothing in common. That's why it's very complex for it to sit in your head. Yes to drills. Drills, these are continuous, relentless practicing activities that help you memorize everything. There are a bunch of online quizzes which ask you to complete the sentence with the correct preposition, to choose the correct preposition, to write the correct preposition, but the main idea is to remember it in the context. We will get there. Chunks memorizing. This is what I'm speaking about. Uh, never ever mm, in methodology, in actually teaching, we suggest memorizing single words or single prepositions or single phrases. Uh, it doesn't work since we don't have the linkage to the actual content or situation that we are talking about. Um, it's better to actually memorize them uh, inside the sentences, inside the situation, something that you associate this preposition with. Flashcards. This is also a great thing. There is a website called Quizlet and Kahoot and many, many, many others where you can create flashcards yourself. Or... If you are not a tech nerd, you know, as I am, you can use, you can print them out. You can make them without even a printer. You can actually take a piece of paper, write the verb, adverb, whatever, and the preposition, like, on the other side. And then practice, train yourself. Of course, the more words, the more prepositions to uh, memorize, but try not to do it um, like 100 prepositions a day. No, it never works like this. Um, it's better to be more consistent, but for example, learn at least two or three a day. As for me, even one a day, but every day is better than 100 because you will definitely forget them. That's how our brain works. It's not about you. It's about just the structure of our brains. 
it tends to erase things it doesn't need or it doesn't want to memorize. You know what I mean? Next one, record yourself. Uh, super simple advice, but it actually works greatly. Well, once you found a prepositional phrase you like, uh, once you've written it down, try to record yourself. I always tell my students the next thing. The grammar you've learned has to be spoken out because when you don't use it, you lose it. That's the thing. Yeah, the grammar has to be used by you, not by the teacher, not by your friend, not by, but, but you. Repeat. Yes. This is something no one likes actually, but it's incredibly necessary. Uh, once I was talking about interval repetition uh, on one of my videos, or if I'm not mistaken, on my Patreon account, but still, repetition is the key. We have to do this fitness for brain. Once we don't do it, we lose it. Treat language as fitness for brain. Once you stop training, you're gonna lose your shape. That's why Google interval of repetition, this is basically the repetition which has to be done after a day, after three, after a week, then after a month. I think I remember correctly. If not, just Google. The last thing here on this list is something I usually do. Sort and note sentences. I sort them according to the preposition and write them inside sentences. So there are columns, for example, about, and all the sentences that I like, the prepositions I like, which include about, and so on and so forth. In case you are a visual learner as I am, it helps me to recall visually especially if it's colored or highlighted. Yeah, it works even better. It helps me recall where it is, what is written there. Yeah, and then I just repeat, voice it up, repeat, use it. Yeah, one of the things I also do, all my students and all my followers know, because I think I post it like every time. Before each class, I usually choose 10 phrases that I've learned, for example, during my English classes, and I use them while teaching. It also can be helpful for you. For example, before each class, if you do have classes with English teachers, or when you, I don't know, start recording yourself and making up a story, uh, try to write them down and use them. Yes, it's leaving your comfort zone, but once you don't push yourself, you lose it. So let's get out of the comfort zone, let's get out of the box and be better. And method number two, which is just games and nothing else, uh, is connected to the activities I like doing with my students or actually when I'm learning those things myself. So look at me now, it's a game, which... Uh, I'm sorry, my dog snores. <laughs> okay, the game Look at Me Now is very similar to Simon Says. When you're with your friends or by yourself, try making some comments and directions to your friends, uh, including prepositions. Stand up, put your finger on your nose. On. Stand up. On. Those are prepositions. Yeah. The more you do, the better you remember. Uh, list challenges. These are the things that mainly are connected to writing things down. For example, I usually do it with my students, write as many words for preposition in, about, for, and who writes more wins. Then we, of course we check it together and uh, make sentences with them, questions with them, and practicing. Yeah, super simple. And the last one is made up stories. The task is the next. Take three prepositions, prepositional phrases or phrasal verbs you like, include them into a made-up story about anything you want and try to uh, make your friend guess what they were. You cannot even imagine the result of such work. It helps so much. Ah, love it. So the main thing is to be willing to do it Second, to be consistent. And the third one, 
try to be a bit creative with your learning because there are so many things on the web, uh, something you can do with a paper and pen, just Google. You can make your learning fun. If you've got any other ideas of methods how you memorize these things, please comment below. I'll be really, really happy to hear out from you. I hope it was useful. Don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe, and yeah, see you later in the next videos. Mwah! <laughs>